let's talk about that period that you went through in your life. You get the $130 million contract at the time you were the highest paid player in the NFL. Yeah. Mike, I lived in Atlanta when you were in Atlanta and you might have been, you you were as popular, if not more popular than Chipper Jones. And everybody, if you from Georgia, they know what you're Chipper. <laughs> Shout out to Chip. And, and so I'm thinking to myself, Mike, you could have had a car dealership. <clears throat> you could have had about five or six McDonald's. You could have had franchise after franchise. You get that money. What made you to think to say, you know what, I want to do something that, I don't know if you thought that what you did was that harmful, but I'm saying a dog fighting ring, that's what yeah. you, you get, you get a, you probably got 25 million yeah, to sign. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I had 13 million in the bank. <laughs> when I, you know, when I was, what, 25, 26 years old and, knew, and didn't know what to do with it. Right. That's where I come from. Right. You know, by the time I end up taking care of You ain't think about a car wash, you ain't think about a barbershop. I was young, I went to Arthur Blank and I told him, I said, Mr. Blank, he used to always come to me like, you're spending all your money, you're spending all your money. This is real story, it's true talk. And I'm like, nah, nah, I got $15 million in the bank. I don't know what to do with this money. Right. I got everything I want. Every car, every house, whatever. I don't know what to do. And there's more coming. Got mom, got so, mom situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I got to protect this now. So I'm like, yeah, introduce me to some people. Right. And help me, you know, grow this. Right. And, and so we had to sit down and, and uh, you know, it, it kind of went, it kind of went crazy. Um, and that's, you know, uh, to be determined. But uh, yeah, man, I, I was I was making those, taking those steps to invest my money properly and money was put into Union City, Atlanta. Um, was gonna build a city, strip malls and mm -hmm. restaurants and we had a grant. We was, so I was getting there. Right. I was turning the car, I was, right. I was doing what I was supposed right. to do. And then, uh, you know, I ended up, you know, why, as I started to turn the corner, as I started to see life different, you know, I got a, you know, I got a young, you know, daughter at the time. I got a son that's like four, and you know, as I'm starting to make change, you know, it was just a little too late. Right. It was a little too late, and then I end up going through that, and they they took everything from me. Right. They took everything, Shane. Like I had I, I had eight million like invested in the city. I, they took it all. I'm like. Well, how you do that? So in other words, they thought that the money that even though you were a professional athlete, they think that the money that you got, you got it through ill-gotten means, that you got that through the ring. No, I earned that. No, I, I earned that. That was that came from my play. Right. I, I mean, I saved every I might have spent I might have spent close to maybe liquid, maybe like two million dollars. Right. But it was just How do you get, so much bread. Who, whose idea was it? Say, like, hey, Mike, I got this great idea. Because normally homeboys come up, they got a car wash, or they go in and get you the club. Yeah. Hey, homeboy, we ought to open this club yeah. with your money. You know, you take all the real, you, <laughs> you know, your money. You know, everybody got all these ideas, Mike, with your money now. Ain't yeah, nobody yeah. else bringing anything to yeah. the table yeah. but an idea. Right. No money, right. idea. So, so, so when they came to you, say, hey, Mike, I think we can do this. Because, I mean, with any business, I mean, it, it has to have a yeah. business model, business plan. You got to get dogs. You want to get the best, best dogs from all around the world. You might have to import dogs from Argentina, wherever they do that at. You might have to import the dogs. Right. Okay, now we got to build out. We got to build kennels to house the dogs. I will say this. That had nothing to do with any of my friends. That was you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was. Kind of, I, I, grew up in, I grew up under that. So, like, I grew up seeing that, grew up watching it. So it, it just never, like, I still had the hood in me. You're right. I still had the hood in me, and it's like, yo, we gonna stay true to our roots. We Mike, you worked your ass off. You had a lot of homeboys yeah. that didn't work as hard as you and stayed there. You worked your ass off to leave there in order to just to go back. Yeah, but nobody never to visit. Nobody never went to prison though. You didn't think, I, I, yeah. So I'm like, I uh, never, I'm no, like, I know about. You know, no, I'm from a small town in the south. Yeah, and I, I know about dogs. So you can relate, yeah. But I, I, I had never heard of anybody going to jail either. Me neither. So I, you know, so that's why I was like. So I, I so I didn't go I didn't go to prison for that. Right. You know I went to prison for interstate commerce. Right. Which was kind of you know confusing. Like damn okay you know so laws and rules had to be changed right. in order to make it so that you know I but look I that's water under the bridge. Right. Got a documentary coming out to talk about oh, it all. Okay. And just kind of clearing the air on right. uh, the big misconceptions and the way I'm perceived. It's like, you know, have, I, I don't take anything away. I don't blame anybody but myself for right. everything. But it's some things that I, you know, I feel, I do feel like I got to take advantage of in a lot of situations. I look at it like this. You didn't have any homeboys. I mean, like, when you first started coming on the show. My homeboys are soft, though. They, they wanted nothing but the best for me. Right. But they knew I was, I was, I was a hard head. Hard head. 
when I when I not not because I had a lot of money and I could I could make decisions, but they knew like yo if if, uh, if we deter Mike from doing this, he ain't gonna do nothing. But continue to do, you know what I'm he saying? He gonna do so, it with somebody else. He gonna cut him. Yeah, so they they <laughs> felt like they they felt like they were stuck between the rock right. and the hard spot with me, and I res I respect them for that. And just the I heard the stories of them, you know, wanting me to get away from it, but they, they you know they didn't know what to do, man. Right. You know they I mean I, maybe they felt like man Mike might you might cut me off right. if I you know if I go too hard on them and and, and it's it's. It's really it's messed up because that's how we was on the right track. Right. Everybody. And then when I say they had big plans, big dreams, and you know, we started a sports agency. We was doing a lot of stuff, man. They had sharp ideas and by the decision that I made, right. the decision that I made screwed everything up. You know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and become an official member of Club Shay Shay, where we do something before two something.